starts travel at a constant speed then it stop for a short time and then it travel at a higher constant speed so whenever you have a distance time graph always remember the distance time graph the slope represent the speed so first we have to draw a constant slope because in the question they mentioned a bus travel at a constant speed then stop it means the slope should be zero because stop means there is no speed if speed is zero slope should be zero and then travel at a higher constant speed so there should be a straight line but steeper slope or gradient will should be higher so first a bus travel at a constant speed so we draw a straight line constant slope then it stopped so when the uh, object stopped the speed is zero that's why it is a horizontal line but it's a short time as i mentioned so we don't have to draw very long it should be a short and then it travel at a higher speed higher constant speed so how we represent a higher constant speed so we should draw much steeper slope so first and the third part both cases the speed is constant but the only difference between the two is one is having a higher speed than the other then in part b an elevator or a lift starts from the ground floor of a building the figure 1.2 shows a speed time graph so this figure shows a speed time graph for an motion of an elevator from uh, to the top floor of the building in the question use the graph determine the distance so whenever you have a speed time graph and you need distance so area under the graph will give us the distance travel so the distance travel is equals to area under the graph so we'll check what shape it is making you can solve this in two ways either you divide into triangle two triangles and one rectangle that is one way or you can consider this as a trapezium so in a trapezium you will take the two parallel sides you will take the two parallel side and the distance between the two parallel side example h and the formula for area of the trapezium that is half sum of the parallel side into h so 1 by 2 sum of the parallel side a plus b multiplied by h so the parallel side one is called a other one is b and you can say any one like example i can say this as a if i say this one is a a the other one will be b so it does not make difference to the final answer so a a is starting from 0 it's starting from 0 and ending at 25 so a is 25 plus b what about b b is starting from this point so it is each box is representing 0.5 because 10 box is equal to 5 so it each box is 0.5 So this is five point five six six point five seven. One, two. So this is seven point five. So this one is seven point five, and the other side it's at twenty. So this is at twenty mark. So from seven point five to twenty, how much is the length? This total length for B. From seven point five to twenty, that is twelve point five. So this will be twelve point five into height h, the distance between the two sides. So it is starting from zero and ending at uh, each box is representing point one. So this is three point one, three point two, and three point three. So this will be three point three. So when we simplify, we substitute all the values. the sum of the parallel side into height half sum of the parallel side into height will get about 61.4 because uh, 12 plus 12.5 that is 37.5 then that is divided by 2 and multiplied by 3.3 which will give us 61.87 meter 
तो मीटर और अप्रोक्सीमेटली वी कैन से इट इज सिक्सटी टू मीटर That's how we find the distance traveled by the object using the area under the graph. Or you can divide into triangle and rectangle and find area of each shape and then add them at the last to get the total distance. In question two. Figure 2.1 shows a dummy of a mass 70 kg used in a crash test to investigate the safety of the car. So to check the safety of the car, this dummy is used. The car approaches a solid barrier at a speed of 20 meter per second and it crashes into a barrier and stops suddenly. Calculate the momentum of a dummy immediately before the crash. So what is, look if a car like example if I say You are inside the car. If the car is moving at a speed of twenty meter per second, so what is your speed? Your speed is also same because you are inside the car. So, if the car approaches the barrier with a speed of twenty meter per second, the speed of the dummy will also be twenty meter per second. The mass of the dummy is given that in the beginning they mentioned the mass of a dummy is seventy, and we want the momentum immediately before, like before the crash, because after the crash, if the car stops, the dummy will also stop. So the after the crash, the momentum of a dummy will be zero. but before the crash what is the momentum of the dummy so mass of a dummy is 70 it is given moment and it's better whenever you are solving a question the first thing you will write a formula so momentum it is denoted by p which is a product you can write a formula in word or you can write in equation mass into velocity so mass of a dummy Is seventy and the velocity speed at which the dummy is moving is twenty. So seventy multiplied by twenty that is one thousand four hundred kilogram meter per second. Then determine the impulse that must be applied to a dummy to bring to rest. So impulse is the change in momentum. look that finally this this is the initial momentum of the dummy which is 1400 kg meter per second and when the dummy will stop what will be the final momentum the final momentum will be 0 kg meter per second so we want a impulse impulse is a change in momentum that is final minus initial so final is 0 initial is 1400 so we'll get 1400 you can write newton second or you can also write kilogram meter per second it won't make difference because the unit here newton second is equivalent to kilogram meter per second and impulse the formula for the impulse is a final momentum minus initial momentum that is impulse so this was the initial momentum of the dummy as the dummy stop finally it will stop so the final momentum is zero when we subtract the two we'll get the change in momentum which we call impulse the next part we need the force exerted on the dummy to stop or deceleration in the in the crash test the passenger compartment comes to rest in 0.2 second what is the deceleration so how to work out a deceleration this is a time it comes to rest final velocity is zero and what about initial velocity the passenger compartment the car the passenger compartment was originally if the car is moving with 20 meter per second so speed of the passenger compartment is also 20 so 
So the final speed is 0 and the initial speed is 20. We want the deceleration. When we get a negative acceleration, that means deceleration, which is final velocity minus initial divided by time. The final is 0, initial is 20, and the time interval is equal to 0 0.2. So this will come out as minus 20 divided by 0 0.2. So minus 20 divided by 0 0.2, this will give us the negative acceleration, which is also called deceleration. This will be about 100 meter per second square. Final answer will be minus 100, but acceleration negative means deceleration will be positive. A negative acceleration is also called a deceleration. So meter per second square. A seat belt and airbags bring the dummy to rest so that it does not hit the windscreen. The dummy has an average deceleration of 80 meter per second square and the mass of the dummy is 70. We want the force. So how to calculate the force? The formula to calculate force F is equals to MA. Force is equals to mass multiplied by acceleration or deceleration. The mass is 70. And this time, because the deceleration has changed, it is now 80. Before, we, when we calculate, it was 100. But now when seat belt and air bags are used, the deceleration will be smaller. So it is 80. So 70 multiplied by 80, 7 multiplied by 5, uh, 8 is 56. And then two zeros, so it will be 5,600 newtons. That is the force which is experienced by the dummy. Then the deceleration of a dummy is less than the deceleration of a passenger compartment. Explained why Yeah, it will be that's true. Uh, if it is given deceleration when you substitute F is equals to MA mass is 70 and X deceleration is there. So we substitute minus 80. When you substitute minus 80, you'll get minus 5,600 Newton. That is right. Negative sign only shows direction. Like if the dummy is moving forward, the airbags and the seat belt will apply force in opposite direction. That is the significance of a negative sign. But if you use negative sign in your calculation, that is also the right way. The deceleration of a dummy is less than the deceleration of a passenger compartment. Explain why this is a benefit for the safety of the passenger. Look, if the deceleration of the dummy is less or small, it means there is less force on the dummy or the passenger. The smaller deceleration means lower resultant force So if lower resultant force or less resultant force, it reduces the chance of fatal injury. Because if the deceleration is more like greater deceleration, it means there will be a greater force. If there is a greater force on the passenger, then it more likely it will cause serious injury to the passenger. In question 3, figure 3.1 shows In this question, figure shows an oil tank that has a rectangular base with a dimension 2.4 and 1.5 meter and the depth 1.5 as well. The tank is filled with oil having a density of 850 kg per meter cube at the depth of 1.5. Calculate the pressure exerted by the oil on the base. So how to calculate the pressure exerted by the liquid? The pressure exerted by the liquid equal to density of the liquid multiplied by gravity multiplied by depth. So density of the oil is 850. Gravity is 10. 
and the depth how deep it is as they mentioned it is 1.5 meter deep so the depth is 1.5 so when we multiply all the factors 850 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 1.5 we'll get the pressure exerted by the soil on the base which is 13,000 pascal or newton per meter square Yeah, 12,750, that is right. And even in exam, you will write 12,750. The round in a marking scheme, you will find rounded of answer. So if you write 12,750, you will score the marks. But the marking scheme, they write the answer, the rounded of answers only. Then calculate the force exerted by the oil on the base. So we have the pressure. We know the pressure exerted by the oil that is 12,750 Pascal. And what about the base area? Because we want the force here. We know the pressure. So what is the base area of this? This is 1.5. This will be 2.4. So this is the base area. So area will be equal to 1.5 multiplied by 2.4. This will give us a base area. And the pressure we already calculated in the previous part, which is 12,750 Pascal. We need the force, the formula to calculate the force. Pressure is force divided by area. So force is pressure divided, force is pressure multiplied by area. So P equal F by A or F is equals to P into A. So 12,750 times the area which is 2.4 into 1.5 when we multiply how much is the answer the force mm -hmm. 2.4 into 1.5 into 12,750 12,750 times 2.4 times 1.5, which is 45,900 Newton. So marking scheme 45,900, they rounded off to 46, but you can write 45,900. Then the force calculated in A2 is the weight of the oil so calculate the mass so what force we calculated here 4000 newton that they mentioned that is the weight of the oil so weight of the oil yes mina they mentioned weight Weight is equal to force which we calculated. So the force which we calculate 45,900 Newton is a force which we calculated. They say that is also a weight. We need the mass now. So formula weight is equal to mass into gravity. So weight is 45,900 or 46,000 if you round it off. Mass we don't know and the gravity of the earth is 10. So when we solve divide by 10, so it will come out uh, 4,590 kilograms. That is the mass. Then in part C, when he checked the level of the oil in the tank, a man drops a brass key and it sink. So what happened by mistake, maybe a man drops a, a key made up of a brass and what he observed, he observed that key sink. So it, if the key sink, what does it mean? It means the density of the key is more than the density of oil. So what it shows about the density of the brass, so we can say it is more than oil. And then explain how attaching the key to a piece of wood could prevent the key from sinking. So now if we attach a wood, now two objects are mixed with each other. There's a wood and then the brass. So what happened now the combined density of the wood and the brass 
as i mentioned it tend it prevent it from sinking like it tend to float on the surface of the oil so what does it means if it is floating on the surface of the oil it means that the combined density of the oil So it means the combined density of the wood and the brass is less than the oil. That's why it is floating. So when we combine uh, the wood and the brass, so we observe the combined density of is less than oil. So it float or it does or it prevent it from sinking. 